In tonight's reading, St. Paul vindicates a lot of us fellow pastors. Welcome back to St. Paul Lutheran Church in Unionville, Michigan on this Tuesday, the 11th of July in the year of our Lord, 2023. I'm glad you can join us as we end our day with God's Word and prayer, as we do. This is now week 28, day 2 of reading through the New Testament in 2023, and that brings us to 1 Corinthians chapter 4. So again, Paul is writing this book, this letter, this epistle to them. An epistle is sort of an open letter. And he has begun to address the divisions that they have within their church, uh, where one makes a big deal about following this leader who has some superior wisdom, or the other, another group uh, makes a big deal about following this leader uh, who... At, who has some sort of superior wisdom, at least in their minds. Paul, uh, as we saw yesterday, Paul kind of cuts all of that off and instead points them to something greater that God's Word gives. Uh, but now in 1 Corinthians 4, he defends himself as an apostle. It seems that one of the controversies there in the church in Corinth was challenging Paul's credentials, in a sense. His qualifications for being an apostle, his qualifications for, for preaching the word that he did, the, uh, how can we trust the gospel that he preached, that sort of thing. Uh, so Paul uh, defends himself here, in a sense, and on account of uh, on account of not just what he says, but how he says it, um, I, I personally feel feel vindicated, and we'll, we'll come back to how. But first, let's turn to our text. First Corinthians chapter 4. This is how one should regard us, as servants of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required of stewards that they be found faithful. But with me it is a very small thing that I should be judged by you or by any human court. In fact, I do not even judge myself, for I am not aware of anything against myself, but I am not thereby acquitted. It is the Lord who judges me. Therefore do not pronounce judgment before the time before the Lord comes, who will bring to light the things now hidden in darkness, and will disclose the purposes of the heart. Then each one will receive his commendation from God. I have applied all these things to myself at Apollos for your benefit, brothers, that you may learn by us not to go beyond what is written, that none of you may be puffed up in favor of one against another. For who sees anything different in you? What do you have that you did not receive? If then you received it, why do you boast as if you did not receive it? Already you have all you want. Already you have become rich. Without us you have become kings. And would that you did reign so that we might share the rule with you. For I think that God has exhibited us apostles as last of all, like men sentenced to death, because we have become a spectacle to the world, to angels, and to men. We are fools for Christ's sake, but you are wise in Christ. We are weak, but you are strong. You are held in honor, but we in disrepute. To the present hour we hunger and thirst, we are poorly dressed and buffeted and homeless, and we labor, working with our own hands. When reviled, we bless, when persecuted, we endure, when slandered, we entreat, we have become and are still, like the scum of the world, the refuse of all things. I do not write these things to make you ashamed, but to admonish you as my beloved children, for though you have countless guides in Christ, you do not have many fathers. 
for I became your father in Christ Jesus through the gospel. I urge you then, be imitators of me. That is why I sent you, Timothy, my beloved and faithful child in the Lord, to remind you of my ways in Christ as I teach them everywhere in every church. Some are arrogant, as though I were not coming to you. But I will come to you soon, if the Lord wills. And I will find out, not the talk of the, these arrogant people, but their power. For the kingdom of God does not consist in talk, but in power. What do you wish? Shall I come to you with a rod, or with love, in a spirit of gentleness? Thus far, 1 Corinthians chapter 4. So, did you pick up on some of the reasons why some, at least in the church in Corinth, questioned Paul's authority? They questioned Paul's authority because he did not come with the, the aura of a great and wise thinker. Um, he did not come with a huge, showy ministry. He came in poverty, having to work to support himself along the way. Uh, he came not with all sorts of honor as the as the great uh, the great apostle of their day, sort of like a modern day televangelist but someone who was mocked and derided. Uh, he did not have the sort of, of charismatic, uh, you know, showy, glitzy ministry that apparently they were looking for from a true apostle of Jesus Christ. They, by contrast, felt like their wisdom had made them these great kings. And so he sort of pushes their words back in their face. One of the things that makes me personally feel a bit vindicated here is the sarcasm that Paul uses. I, I generally have it under control now, but I can be an incredible incredibly sarcastic person. Incredibly sarcastic. And this chapter from St. Paul is just dripping with sarcasm. It is a thing of beauty. So on that level, vindicated. Um, doesn't mean I won't continue to try to keep that in check, because there's a time and a place for that, to be sure. But also, the broader question of what do you look for in your pastor? How do you know a good pastor when you see one? What is that, what does a, a really good pastor look like? Well, in Paul's case, he came not dressed up in fancy clothes, but working to support himself. He came not with all kinds of cleverness, but with the simple message, the simple proclamation of Jesus Christ and him crucified. He came not to set himself up as a pillar of the community there in Corinth, a leader in the town, but their servant in Jesus Christ. And that certainly also vindicates me, at least to an extent. Certainly any pastor who has served for any length of time will look back and see people that he has sinned against and failed in different ways, often completely without realizing the way his words would be heard, for example, and his words cause offense in the process, other times simply by what he's failed to do, 
for a variety of reasons, each of us sees our own faults, and I'm sure you see them as well. But what is it that makes that pastor, no, what is it that gives that pastor authority? What is it that gives his words authority? It is the Word of God that he preaches Jesus Christ and him crucified for the forgiveness of sins and to give the gift of eternal life and salvation. It helps if he's not sarcastic, at least not too sarcastic. But that's really where his authority comes from. Let's close with Luther's evening prayer. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong, and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Oops, sorry. Uh, as always, thank you for joining us as we end our day with God's word and prayer. Uh, God willing, we will see you at this same time tomorrow. In the meantime, God's blessings on your night.